Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. This is Carmen with Elemental Designs. You guys, today we're going to be trying out a little bit of a different angle because of just the way I had to set up my camera. This canvas is really, really large. It is uh, 14 by 16 inches, which I've done, I think, once before, twice before. So it's really, really large. And um, basically, what I've done is that um, in the past, I have many that I created in my Explore tool. Um, and I have made like some really large, like chipboard shapes and stuff like that. This is one of them. And this one has a beautiful little kitten on it. Hello, hello, Sasong. This one has a beautiful little kitten on it. Let me tell you guys how big it is. And even though I no longer have a cat, I couldn't resist. 10 and basically three fourths of an inch by about seven and a quarter or seven and either way is about the same hello hello janet so that's what we're going to be using today i had it in a little ziploc bag and yes so i went ahead and i went to the of this humongous canvas this is of uh 14 by 16 i believe it is or 12 by 16 i think is what it is or 12 by something like that anywho it's really large it's really really large so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be basically painting this. Um, I went and pulled out this trim, which I love. I've used it plenty of times before, but it's been a long while since I used it. No laugh at my packaging, you guys. A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. And um, I'm hoping to be able to use some of this, but in my mind, the way that I see it, it's kind of draped, um, kind of like along the edges, kind of like bunched in along the edges. And then I went ahead and found this really pretty trim. This guy's like pink and sparkly. And I figured that I can use this to like make little bows in some areas. So, so far, that's where my mind is taking me to. Will I arrive? I don't know. But we shall see. Okay. So the other items that I have here are some stencils. This is a DIY stencil of a, uh, you know, like a brick wall. So I'm going to be using this stencil, I think. I also pulled out this one by Deco Art, which has a really cute bird. And I'm thinking that somewhere along here, along the top, like once I've added my paper and stuff, I can go ahead and stencil this in there just to like maybe paint a little bird in there or something. Um, and I kind of like this one because you guys know I'm not really too much into the adding the flowers to the trees and stuff like that. Um, and, oh, and I have this one too, but I don't know if I'm going to use this one or not. I kind of like this little foliage right here, which is this one right here. So basically, um, I'm gonna be using this. Hopefully, this is a two. This is two or one. Let me see how many are in here because I don't know. Sometimes they bring two. Sometimes they bring one. Let me see if it has another one in there. You're still using the cricket, Janet, or you shut it off? <laughs> um, oh yeah, this is only one. So this is only one, and it's pretty large. So I was thinking maybe I can use it like, you know, like some foliage kind of like coming in certain parts of the canvas just to give it a little bit of texture. Hello, hello, Tina. You guys, if you come in and you say hello and you notice that I haven't said hello to you, it's not that um, I'm ignoring you, it's that I haven't seen your comments, okay? Um, and yes. So basically, these are the, the, um, the stencils that I have so far. Um, and then as my accent piece, I pulled out this page from my paper pad. I know there's a little bit of a shadow in here because again, the way that I have my camera set up, but hopefully you guys can see it. It's really, really pretty. It's got these really pretty um, flowers. And my thing is upside down, right? No, you guys can see me the right way. You see, me, you see it the way I see it. All right, so I got this as well. Hello, hello, Nada. So that's what I have so far. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is literally glue my paper onto the canvas. Now, obviously, this is 12 by 12, and I still have a lot of space left. So I'm going to try to center this as much as possible. I'm going to glue the whole entire page. All I'm going to do is basically remove all the rough, um, all the sharp edges from around the border. And I'm going to get this like all mod podged in and ready to go because the stenciling and everything I'm going to do over this layer so that it can kind of blend it all in and incorporate it all. 
So hopefully that makes a lot of sense. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and kind of rip off my edges. Um, I don't want them so sharp, but I don't want them to be kind of like all over the place and I don't wanna lose so much of the paper. So I'm just gonna try to see if I can basically just kind of do it, do it like this. So we're gonna do it like that. Um, today we're gonna be working with this image right here. This is the image that I cut out from Cricut. And it's on chipboard. So we're gonna be painting this and basically this is gonna be all one solid color. This is why the background for me is so important that it has some color already because I'm gonna be painting this one of the metallic colors, I'm not sure. And maybe I'll add a few different like little tones in the flower area, but mostly it's gonna be dark. And that's what we're gonna do. Today we're going to create something hopefully beautiful, right? As the thumbnail implies. If I can get this thing to lift up, there we go. I'm still getting used to working with nails, you guys. I'm not used to it all the way. I just hope that they don't break like the last time that they broke while I was like, <laughs> I was trying to lift something up and I think that <laughs> it just broke. Hello, hello, Karina. And welcome to today's live event. So we're gonna continue to rip these little edges off. I want to keep most of that flower power pattern, which is why I didn't want to kind of like just freehand it, because otherwise I would have just freehanded it. But I don't want to lose most of that pretty pattern. If I can grab this paper. Very nicely. And I want all my edges to be rough, because that'll help me to blend it into the canvas a lot easier than I would be able to with the straight edges. If I can pick it up. Can't see you guys. So what is everybody doing today? How has you guys' week been? I changed the, the wallpaper on my desk today. So it looks a little different, a little cleaner. It was getting on my nerves. Once these things get dirty, I feel like I have to change it. I try my hardest to hold on to it and wipe it as much as I can. But once it's like stained ugly, like I don't want it. <laughs> I gotta take it off. Oh, you playing with papers? Nice. Okay, no problem. So these edges are gonna be rather rough. Kind of like how I wanted it. So we're gonna go ahead and position this this way. And like I said, I'm fully aware that I can cover my whole canvas. I'm not gonna rip another page just to fill it in. So we're gonna work around that by using some stencils and some other stuff. So let's see what let's see what we um what we get done. I can open this. That's all. I need you. Open. Let's see, let's see, you guys. I'm looking for some kind of a brush that I can use. I found. So let's see. 
Thank you, Sasso. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna add some glue onto this paper. I think this is Isabel's brush. I don't even know. She'll tell me when she sees me using it. <laughs> She'll be like, Kind, that's my brocha. So I'm trying not to have too much shadow, but I do apologize. Hopefully, you guys can still see. I don't know how Sasson's videos, the lighting is like so perfect. I cannot get good lighting to save my life. Meanwhile, we do it from the same spot. It's so strange. So we're basically gonna shellac this real quick and just add some glue on here. I want to make sure we get all these edges. All right, all right. Hello, hello, Phone Jones. How are you doing, love? So I'm going to align this paper on here. I'm not going to squeeze it down because what I'm going to do is squeegee it down. And I'm going to squeegee it with my squeegee if I can find it. <laughs> I don't even know that's what it's called. That's what I'm going to call it, you guys. Where are you, squeegee? I need you now. I have a bone folder, but I want the other one. Where did I put it? I don't know. Why well, I could never find anything I'm looking for when I need it. All right. So as you guys know, this is like, you know, soft in the back. So it's really hard to get the bubbles out, which is why I'm lifting the paper as I'm pushing all the air out to try to get the best adhesion. And I'm not gluing over the surface because I don't want the paper to be wet on both sides because that's how the paper tears. So if I want to mod podge over it, First, I want to make sure that the paper is glued down as best as it can. I'm going to flip this over. And I'm just going to squeeze it that way. And squeeze it down as best as I can. It's never going to be perfect, you guys. It's never going to be perfect, which is OK. You can hear that paper crunching, but that's also the wallpaper because there's air bubbles <laughs> in it. So we're going to do that. And then we're gonna add glue wherever else we need to add glue around the edges, so on and so forth. And we're gonna keep it cute and copacetic and we're gonna keep it moving. Keep looking, seeing wherever it lifts up. Just glue it down. Rub it out with your fingers, whatever you gotta do. Thank you for the thumbs up. So let's see. No problem, love. Hope she feels better. So let's keep on gluing this. Some of my paper is sticking and it's creating bubbles here and bubbles there. So I'm gonna try to smooth it out as best as I can. Okay. 
Let's take that right in there too, right in the little edges. So that's as smooth as that's gonna get for me. I'm okay with that. I'm OCD just a little bit, you guys, but I'm okay with it overall. So this is done. I'm gonna go ahead and seal this. Usually I would do it with um, clear gesso, but I don't have any, I'm out. I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> hello, hello, Claudia. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mod podge this because again, I don't want things to get messed up. And if they do get messed up, I wanna be able to at least wipe most of it away if I cannot salvage all of it, right? So we need to make sure that our surface is somewhat protected. So whatever's coming next, it can handle it. And since I'm going to be drawing stuff anyway, I might as well, right? Now, I hope you guys can see the paper well, because I have no idea how this is going to end up. So we might keep some of this paper. We might lose some of it. It happens to me more often than not that I end up losing the paper that I use as a background just because of the way that I do things. So. Let's spread this glue out as evenly as we can. This dries rather quickly. We don't want glue bubbles everywhere, right? So let's try to smooth it out. Wherever you find little pockets, fill it in with glue. So whatever the paper is, the more air pockets you're gonna have. Just be aware of that. Okay, this goes this way. I'm gonna leave this be for right now. I just want this glue around these edges to kind of um, get better. Let me see if I can um, dry it a little bit so that I can go on to stenciling. Hope you guys don't mind the noise. Let's try to do this quickly. I'm really more concerned about the edges and not so much the center right now. What is that brush? This, this is just a regular brush. This is, um, actually I think this is Isabel because I've never seen this brush before. I think she bought this over there where she lives at. It's like one of those synthetic painting brushes, like for painting the house and cabinets and stuff like that. Don't rub the paper too much when it's still wet. Don't do stuff to the paper when it's still wet because you will break it. Let that kind of dry first a little bit. Hello, hello, Lizzie. So this is pretty dry. I'm um, pretty dry. Oh, not up here. Here's pretty wet. I hate the way the glue feels in your hands. I dislike it immensely. Okay, that should be good enough. 
for me to at least begin the stenciling process. So I have a few stencils, you guys. I got a few stencils that I'm going to be using. Let me wet my brush because if not, it'll turn into a spatula. So let me wet this up real quick. That's why I mess up all my brushes. And as much as I tell people to clean their brushes, I'm the first one not to do it. Okay. So I got my brush clean. So I was gonna do, oh yeah, I was gonna do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some of my bricks in different places. Um, I have here some DIY gesso, I mean not gesso, modeling paste. This is with plaster of Paris glue and a little bit of paint. With my spatula. So, see, it's really thick. It's not like your regular paste. This is really, really, really thick. And actually, I need to put something under there. So let me see what I find. I'll put my old art journal, just so that I can have that sturdy um, base under it. So when I press down, I'm not like pressing into hollow. So let's see. This is really thick, so I gotta push it in, because like I said, it's really, really thick. It's more like a stucco. And the, as the longer I leave my bottle open, the faster that it goes drying. Okay. So basically that's what we're doing. And I do want this to be a little bit cleaner, so I'm just gonna pick up whatever I can. Okay, so let's keep going. Se va secando. It goes drying up as I go using it. And it's really hard to get out of the jar, but it's really thick and yummy once you use it. It's a great um, agent for adding like heavy embellishments. Like if you could just bury them in there, it'll definitely hold them in. My hand. John is here. Oh, Jay, it's about some nephew. I mean, not nephew, grandson. Why are we say nephew? Grandson. Where's your sister, Jay? Where's Naya? Say hello to Naya for me, please. And say hello to John. Okay, so let's keep adding some of our bricks, you guys. And this is not about perfection. 
you just need to add some kind of detail or something in there and it's really really thick like i said it probably would have been better with a credit card than with this thing it's too flexible and i don't know where my other spatula is but we're gonna work it out we're gonna try anyway right that's what we came to we came here to try at least so we're gonna get that and it's nice and grungy and i love it because it's, it's um it's got texture to it not just from the design but the paste itself it's kind of sandy a little bit kind of gritty um and i love that i think that'll catch the colors nicely and again i don't need them to be perfect i just need them to be right areas that i don't want the stem to wet i'll just clean those areas off and just leave what i want And I'm gonna add some of that, whatever's left over there. I'm gonna just add a little bit here and there, just to kind of make it a little bit grungy, right? Just a little bit grungy. Venus, no. Let's get some of that in there. Let's keep doing some. I don't know if I wanna add bricks so much on the flower side because I really like the flower side. Hopefully you guys can see that well. I really like the flowers, so I don't want to add too much brick on that. So I'm going to put this to the side and actually start adding maybe some of my other ones. So again, I'm going to keep working off of this corner here. Or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll add, up, add them up from here. No, 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 no. I'm going to keep working from this over here. And I'm just going to start adding some of this foliage that I've picked out. Let me put this book in the corner and just try my best to get this as smooth as possible. Hi, Naya. <laughs> Welcome, sweetie. Welcome. I was just asking about you. Okay. Oh, I like that. Let's see the texture. I'm going to dry that so that I can keep adding more layers. Let me put this over here. Where's my rack? I got to look for my rack. Let's try drying that real quick. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know? No. I always got a bag. Hello, hello, Dora. Yes, F4, F4. Isabel, yo lo que se me durmió. I think my friend took a nap. <laughs> we wore her out today, Janet. <laughs> we wore her out. <laughs> this is gonna be a rather simple canvas, you guys. I think. But you guys know how I am with simple things, right? Hello, hello, Candy. No time on C. How are you doing, love?
Since it's mixed with cement, this paste will continue to dry even after. I just need it to be dry enough that I can keep layering my um, foliage on top of it. Oh, no, Naya. Hurry up, find the charger. <laughs> So let's add more foliage. Okay, let me just make sure that my book is in a good position underneath so that it can support the pressure that I'm putting on my stencil. Stencils always go easiest on the flattest surface possible. I'm gonna spread this paste out. I'm not looking for perfection, just coverage, you guys, just coverage. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Let me go ahead and do, well, let me not do that side on two. I don't dry this side. I gotta get it at least dry enough that it doesn't stick when I put the other stencil over it. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the glue gun. I need the heat gun. Oh, you at grandma's house? Oh, no. Oh, that's awesome, Candy. Now you finally get some meat time, huh? Well earned. <laughs> Woo! Sorry, you guys. Camera down. Can you put it up there? Oh, I'm burning my paper. I got stuck with the paper on the. It won't stick. Are you in? You out. You in? No. Uh, you out. But let's try not moving it too much, you guys. Oh, that's home. I burned my paper, you guys. Look, I got a brown spot. Yeah, I dropped it, y'all. I dropped it, you guys. I dropped it. Come on, no. This is pretty dry. It dries really quick because, again, it's got cement in it, so it helps it a little bit. We're going to keep layering these. Yeah, I think that this paste is, like, mixed with um, Deco Arts paste, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm looking at the consistency. So I think what I did is I had a little bit left over of, like, modeling paste. So I took that and mixed it with a little bit of um, plaster of Paris. I added some more glue, some more paint. Um, and it actually lasted a while. I just found the bottle today. I've, I've lost it <laughs> for, a couple, for a couple of weeks, actually. I didn't know where it was. That's why I thought I didn't have any. It's like, no, I got to make more. Oh, we got it. We got it. Then I just try to scrape. Um, whatever is left on top. Like I said, it's not perfection, it's quality, quantity, being able to spread it everywhere. That's really what I'm looking for. So that when I add my color up here, um, it goes on well. Hello, hello. Yeah, I did. I dropped you guys. I'm sorry. I still study. I still study. Hopefully you guys can forgive me and love me anyway. <laughs> I'm moving it a lot because if you stay stuck, you will burn it. If you stay stuck, you're gonna fill it up with air. You can wanna do that. I've done that plenty of times um, because it creates really nice texture, but it depends on what you're going for. I don't wanna lose that much of the texture on this one. But this one doesn't bubble as much anyway because again it's got like the Paris, the plaster of Paris in it. So um that kind of seals it up a little bit more and it doesn't bubble as much. It just gives you more of that thickness. 
Um, and yeah. Got a few more to add in here, you guys. Just a few more. Hello, hello, Sue. How are you, love? Thank you so much for joining us today. It came out really, really thick. Really, really thick. I'm okay with like the, the extra textures and stuff. I'm fine with all of that. Most of this is not going to really show. Who, Janet? That's all? Me? Oh, you're so sweet. So are you. That's why I still got you in my life. No problem, love. Thank you, darling. Yeah, I only want to surround myself, intimately speaking, with the best of human beings that I can find. And to me, the best of a human being is somebody who's honest and genuine and doesn't change on you. And I'm happy to report that that's exactly what I have around me. Hello, hello, Isabel. Oh, they did? Bendito, her charge, her phone was dying. She's like, I don't got a charge while I'm in grandma's house. <laughs> oh, Jay's back. <laughs> well, I love you too, my friend. Hello, Zeus. I got one more to add so that I just corner here and then I'm done with this part of it. The only other thing that I have to stencil in is my bird. And I, that's tentatively speaking. I have to see it lay itself in here. Add another layer so that I covered the all corners. Oh, they're on the mom's hotspot. <laughs> oh, thank you, my friends. Listen, we can only be who we are, right? Some of us are going to love us for it. Other people are going to hate us for it. Just be true with yourself. And the ones that admire your truthfulness will be there. That's all we can do. We can be anything extra and we can be anything else. Because then that's not you. That won't be me either. Right? I'm very proud. I care about as a lot of people probably saw. <laughs> it's not a it's not a bad thing, you guys. It's not a bad thing. I know for some it's a little bit, you know, like oh my goodness, but rise is reality, and I don't fight my reality, nor do I deny it. I embrace it. And I face it with it's good, with it's bad, with it's pretty, and when it's ugly. Right? That's all we can do. Say, Viva la vida! <laughs> Everybody, pound, Viva la vida! <laughs> y no la vida loca, okay? <laughs> Just life in general. You gotta live life. Thank you, Zeus. Yeah, exactly.
I like that. Oh, that's kind of coming over the edge of the paper. I think that's gonna look really nice when I start blending colors up in that direction. I think that's gonna look really, really pretty. And again, I'm gonna try to keep a lot of the paint off of this area here, like the main square, but I am gonna be adding paints to the tops and the bottoms to blend it on it. I'm sorry, I'm burning some soul. Yeah, I'm cooking some soul with the heat too because he's on the other end of it. Hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me see if this bird of mine is going to fit in here, you guys. I don't even know if it's going to fit in here. Okay. Let me see what I do. Okay, so I got most of my... um. That's pretty good. And that'll continue to dry. That's how that texture looks up there. Hopefully, you guys can see all of that yumminess. That we're going to be adding paints and inks to in a hopefully very controlled fashion. I know lo toste, mija. Lo hice tostada, nada más le faltaba el quesito. Un chin de mozzarella cheese on top. It would have been done. <laughs> All right, so we got this right here. I think this is beautiful right here. So I'm thinking that I'm going to have to cut out a shape like this. I, that I can use for a mask so that I can continue to add more stenciling around the area so that when I put this in, it kind of fits. It, it is encapsulated in a way. So let me see if I can do that, you guys. Let's see. I got myself a piece of paper, a piece of cardstock that I'm going to use mask. All I'm going to do is trace this oval out so that I can put it in the center. So when I go over the area when I'm stenciling and I lift that paper up, it'll actually leave everything, hopefully, fingers crossed, nice and crisp. So when I insert my image back in, right? So let's see. I need to trace this. Okay, so that has been traced. Let's cut it off. Look, Jana, no cover. <laughs> Thank God the ruler that Isabel gave me doesn't have a cover because I'll probably be lost too. <laughs> So let's see, let's see. So we're gonna create this mask. I did do some of the edges already because it was pretty easy. I didn't have to worry about it interfering with my actual design. But when in doubt, create yourself a mask if you can of your object. Even if it's a rough mask, it doesn't have to be exact to the shape. And then you can use that to kind of, you know, do the rest of it. Let me just make sure that the oval is the same on top as it is in the bottom. That's what I really care about. Okay. Yeah, I give it a take so it's this way. Okay, so let's continue our stenciling journey so that we can keep adding more stuff to this, right? I'm gonna add, I guess, I guess I'm gonna add a little bit of brick here, not too much. Again, I don't wanna go over the design too much, but I do wanna kind of like add that in there. Um, I don't want this to lift up. So let me see if I find some double-sided tips. I could put just a teeny little bit. Thank you, thank you. I just want the tiniest little amount of double-sided tape. Oh, thank you. Hmm? He's there, he's there. Thank you, thank you. I was like, oh, it's right there. That's like, never happens. So I'm gonna just take like the smallest little amount because I don't want to damage that center out. Thank God that I mod podged it. But I just want to take a little bit of double-sided tape and just put that in the center. Okay. 
now we can go ahead and do it because we're not going to have the thing moving all over the place. That was my fear. Thank you. Thank you. You know how it's got to keep them juices flowing, right, you guys? So let's go ahead. And I'm going to overhang it off the edge because I don't want them to be exact, right? Let me see if I find something else because I'm fighting with that statue. Where's my metal one? I have a metal one somewhere. You got it. I'm always going through this, right? Story of my life. Well, I found something else I'm going to make a deal. Story, story, story of my life. Okay. Oh wait, I found something. I found this humongous one. What happened? For what? <laughs> uh. <laughs> what are you talking about, Daddy? Oh, the credit card? Oh, she. Oh. <laughs> that was like, what? Yeah, Sasson, give me your credit card, man. Don't be holding out on me. Don't be holding out on me, Sasson. Don't be holding out on me. He said, not the credit card, anything but the credit card. Yeah, the hard one is a lot better because this paste is so thick. You really like don't want to um, do too much to it. This is literally thick enough that you can like fix your house with it. <laughs> For real, it's thick like that. <laughs> yeah, you can plug the walls with it quick and in a hurry if you need it to. And personally, like I said, I don't mind that the texture I actually um, like it, so it doesn't need to be perfect for me. It doesn't need to be perfect. What brand of paste do you use, Carmen? Well, this one right here is actually a Mod Podge of a whole bunch of different things. This is a little bit of gesso that was left over in this jar. Um, there's a little bit of plaster of Paris in there. There's a little bit of glue, a little bit of white paint. It's super, super thick. But as far as brand, um, I either make my own or usually what I use is Deco Art because they've sponsored me in the past with like items and stuff like that, like with products. So I've gotten very, very familiar with their line. But I'll use whatever's in front of me, you guys. I, I don't have a preference, honestly. Although I will say that sometimes I do prefer the ones that I make to the ones that I buy because I can customize how thick they are. Sometimes you want that super thick paste for some of your um, stenciling. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just want that embossed look that is a little bit above the paper, but not too um, too eccentric, right? But sometimes you need that texture. You need it to be thick because you're looking for a lot of dimension. When that is the case, make your own paste. Look at that. It's like clay almost. That's how thick it is. Right. Okay. 
and I don't need it to go everywhere, but I just want it to be in a lot of places. Hmm? No, I'm good. That doesn't bother me. Hey, listen, we live in the real world. Summertime, it's summertime. There's kids out here. I'm not going to be, you know. Come on. Anybody that's had a teenage child knows exactly what that's about. And I've had three of them, so I can do. This is the best time of their life right now. They should be happy and screaming. Because later they're going to be crying. <laughs> no, but life is tough. Life is tough, so enjoy it while you can. How many of us will go back to being 15, 16, or 17 if we could? I would. Even if it's for a day, I would love to revisit that time and that space. No, I'm not ruining nobody's nothing. They could, that's on them, what they do with that. Shoot, don't put that on me. I mean, listen, life is tough. It's scary. It's scary. It is. And you can't take your time for granted. That's why I told my kids always, make sure you enjoy. I know I'm trying not to like, I always told my kids like, as long as you're smart and safe, make sure that you enjoy it to the last drop because it comes and it goes and it doesn't come back. Yeah, I do have a really bad shadow. It's because the pole's so long today and it's right in front of the bulb. And then I'm gonna dry this, you guys. I'm gonna go with that. And then this little bit of paste that's left here, I'm just gonna add it in the bottom and I'm just gonna drag the bottom rows right onto the canvas itself. I'm just gonna drag these bottom ones just to give my bottom texture. I'm gonna drag the last, the last few. And at the same time, I'm gonna waste this paste because I wanna make fresh ones. This is already getting kind of dried out. I like that stucco look on there. So now let's dry this baby out. Let's remove this because we don't need this mask anymore. Right? So let's remove that mask. Let's move this paste to the side. Hello, hello, Giselle. Yeah, it's been a crazy couple of months. That's for sure, Candy. It's been a very, very weird couple months. I think the planets are off of alignment. <laughs> That's what they say, right? I'm going to continue to dry this. Moving it super fast as I go. Hopefully you guys can see what I've done so far. I've added some brick around the bottom and I made like a brick wall with like an opening. Have some foliage happening in the top. Thank you, thank you. Much appreciated. Believe it or not, the thumbs up is like tipping the jar. <laughs> Thank you, Janet. You're also an amazing, most talented superstar.
And it's probably really hot, right? Well, maybe not. Maybe it's nice and breezy with everything that's been going on. <laughs> hopefully, all the hot places that normally don't get that nice wind got some nice wind, and hopefully, they didn't get a very minimal amount. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't seca rápido. This is dry already, you guys. This dries super fast, and it doesn't dry. Um, you know how like when you do like regular, regular modeling paste, then when you dry it, it's kind of like um, it has like a velvety kind of plasticky kind of feel to it almost. This doesn't have that. This is like pure rock. Like I don't know if you guys can hear. Like just me rubbing my hand over. That's like pure rock. So sometimes it's best to make your own. Honestly. Okay, so I'm gonna put my book to the side because I don't need this anymore. Put that over there. I've got basically what I needed to get. And you guys know I don't really worry too much about edges. It's never been something that I took I, I worry myself too much about. Sometimes I love my work to look unfinished because my mind never stops thinking about what is the next thing that I can add. So sometimes when it looks too finished, I feel like oh, I can't do nothing else to it, even though I want to. So sometimes I don't leave the edges done on purpose. And this beautiful little cat is going to fit right in here, nice and snug. And this little bubble that I made for it here with um, all the bricks and stuff like that. So that is the goal. Let's start adding some color to this. And again, I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm even going to do it. Um, I wanted to add some of this. So you guys will tell me. I wanted to kind of add some of this um, trim. This is like a netting. I've used this before. I love this thing right here. It's got like little sparklies on the side. So I was thinking that I can maybe like use them to like kind of frame it out just to give it a little something, something and kind of frame the whole thing out. So I might still do that, um, but that's not a priority for me right now. Priority for me right now is adding paint to this. So we've got some paints. We've got some paints. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some of the ones that I have in bottles which are some of my inks that I've made that I kind of have like in little squeeze bottles. So we're gonna pull out some of those. I'm gonna see what colors I'm gonna get. I have a lot of stuff in this drawer right now. I don't want that today. No red today, you guys. Definitely want some pink. So some pink, some green. I gave up on the squirt tops. The ones that are good, um, the Lindsay, the Stamp Gang ones, those are good. I got the opportunity to try those because my friend um, Tanya gifted those to me a while back. So I did get the opportunity to try them. But I do um, actually love this a little bit more because I get to control how much I put. And if I want to spread the color, I can always just spray, um, like spray it with water, like a water sprayer. That those, never, that those don't clog. But these always clog. So I can just put the color in here and then, you know, incorporate it into that as I need to. And that actually um, works really, really well for me. Let me see. I'm looking for a blue. Oh, I found it. I found it. And then I got a little bit of my gold spray. Just a little bit. Again, I think I've done that like three times. <laughs> and every time I do it, like nobody really, it. I think it's the way that I do it. I, I explain too much. And I, I mean, maybe for some, they appreciate the long in-depth explanations, but some people don't like those. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this as a spray to mix my paints, right? My, my inks. Some of these inks are um, acrylic paint, water, and an iridescent medium. And some of them are PH Martin's inks with water, okay? Um, and that's basically what I use. These little bottles with the tops and everything, you can find them in Dollar Tree. They come in packs of three. Is that right? Is three of them or four of them that the pack brings for a dollar with the little twist cap? These are good for glue. This is good for, um, good for anything. I did switch the bottle. 
it comes with a more flexible bottle like a bottle like this is more flex this is a hard bottle this is you know that way i don't over squeeze but it has a lot my nails thank you thank you thank you i put some lightning in there <laughs> oh it's two for a dollar see either way it's still a good buy so i'm gonna add some of this green just a little bit here and there Just a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of this pink. And depending on how much you open, it depends on how much how much fluid you're gonna get. So if you wanna control the control the gauge, you can kind of control it that way. And I'm gonna do this kind of like all around. Oh, sorry. So someone's nervous with the with the camera because I knocked it over already once from hitting it. <laughs> so Basically, you guys see, right? I spread a little bit of the color everywhere. I'm going to add a little bit more of that green. I'm going to open it up a little bit more. Just going to add a little bit more of this green up here. And I am going to, um, okay, open it, Carmen. I am going to go ahead and uh, spray some of this gold on there. And I don't want to OLD, but I do want to OD just a little bit. And this is like a turquoise. It's really, really dark. And I just want to add like a little hint here and there. <laughs> Just a little hint of this darkness going around the outside border, right? So we're gonna close that. Then I'm gonna use my gold spray. If it'll let me, hopefully. Let's see. I'm gonna do this outside. And my desk is already stained. Got to sorry. <laughs> you guys know how that goes, right? And I'm gonna start um drying this up, moving downward. I'll clean my desk with alcohol later. You're not pretty much. Oh. But I love it. Let me go ahead and add some more gold. I'm gonna bring that down. And this is why when I make my dust, it doesn't last but two seconds, you guys. It only lasts but 2.5 seconds when I make my dust. Sorry if I'm quiet, you guys, but I'm trying not to burn this thing and at the same time trying to cover all this. 
uh, different foliage up and frame this thing. Notice how I'm trying to stay away from the middle. More green at the top. Look where all my green ended up at. Hold on, let me shake this well. Yeah, this iridescent in there. And some yellow, right? Take a flow. Yeah, the table with the color. I'm about to see how to clean that up. So you guys are about to give me a second because it's making me crazy. As much as I try to tell everybody, I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs> Get <it> back. <laughs> That's why you can't hang up none of my work in a gallery because all my canvases are dirty everywhere. <laughs> hey, right? I know. I know. I know. Let me go get something to clean it because it is kind of driving me cuckoo for cocoa puffs. And yeah. meanwhile, you guys can admire what I've done so far. I should not show you that So I'm missing it here. No presentation. I don't know if it'll be enough, but I just want to All right, let me move this. I like how it looks so, so far. It'll be like you got a new mat. I know, I know. I know, I'm trying, I'm trying. Now my whole desk was a like king pine. <laughs> That's good enough. It cleans out most of it. I have to pass it with alcohol. Alcohol is a better job. I have alcohol right here. Yeah, it's brand new. Just put it to the <laughs> bought it and put it to the I'll save that for something. Else. <clears throat> Let me get this. Hopefully I'm not holding you guys up. Oh my god, magic. Almost, almost, right? A little bit of alcohol, you guys. And that's as good as it's gonna get for right now. Yes, okay, thank you. Now later on, I'll do that. And I don't have to worry about the thing moving so I can get into it for real, for real. That's good enough for now. It looks clean. Voila! <laughs> All right, you guys. So, on to the next part, which is stamping my table once again. So, this is what we have so far. I'm gonna move it like this because it's a pretty large canvas so you guys can see like the texture and the bricks. I am gonna go over this with my finger in about a second, that's part of the brick wall in the bottom. And this is the other side. The brick wall is kind of breaking down, but it's okay. 
what is that paper? This paper in the center, this is from a paper pad from Hobby Lobby, and it is from this paper pad right here. It's called Kirby Teasdale um, Studio. And the paper that I use, let me see if I find another one. Oh, this one right there. But you can't really see too well now. The table. Oh, the tissue? That's napkin. The paper on the table. What paper? Oh, this? The paper on the table. Oh, the tissue. <laughs> El papel la mesa. This right here. It's from Dollar General. It's called Magic Cover. It's nine feet by 18 inches. So I was able to cover the whole table. My table's pretty long. I think it was like, what? how much does this cost? Like $3? Yeah. It's about two or three bucks for that huge roll. But it's pretty big. And it's like a honeycomb shape. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I took it because it's light. So I figured, you know, since I'm always like fighting with the light myself, and I was told before, um, I think it was Monica that told me this. She was like, is your paper is dark, so it absorbs the light. I was like, oh, yeah, that'll definitely do it. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this part of it now. I'm going to put this down. And I might as well use my mask, right? Since I just cleaned up my table. I'm going to just use my mask so that I can hopefully get the color on there and not in there. And I have here some black um, deco art. This is high gloss paint. I want this to be super, super shiny because everything in the background is like, you know, a little bit in between. So I got this, I got myself a round brush right here. I got this little makeshift tin right here with some paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start squirting some colors in here. I got myself some of that black. The black is the first thing that I'm going to start layering on because some of the other colors are metallic. So I'm going to start with that black. And then I'll add little hints of uh, metallic colors here and there, little hints here and there to either highlight some of the flowers or things like that. Right now, I'm just like basically basically create this shadowy mask. So I'm just gonna paint this. Again, this is gonna dry in a really, really high gloss. So it's gonna look really, really shiny, not metallic, you guys, kind of like patent leather, because that's basically what it's um, designed for, to make it look like patent leather. So that's the look that I'm gonna go for with this, since I'm not gonna be adding too much color in here, I'm not gonna be adding so much detail. I could have totally gone ahead and painted each individual petal, that, you know, all of that good stuff. But sometimes I like it when it's just the shadow because you get to focus on the shadow for what it is and then you get to absorb also the rest of the background that has been created. Everybody eating ice cream today, huh? Except for me. Except for you? Yeah. Oh, yesterday. Yeah, the day after the yeah, day. Day after the <laughs> Instead of damaging out another piece of paper, I might as well use the same one, right? Now, some paints dry differently than others. So I don't know if this one I'll be able to actually lift off the table once it's all dry. So I'm trying not to get any on my table. I'm trying, you guys. Um, wow. oh, I got a piece of plastic here. Hold on, you guys. So that I don't care. So that I don't care right there. We're going to do it on this piece of plastic. This roll, too, is from Dollar General, and it comes in a huge roll. And you can either use it as it is or cut it up. It's in the kitchen section. Mine, it got stuck to the glue gun, so like it built, it burnt holes through the whole thing. So I just took it and salvaged it by ripping it into smaller pieces. And now when I want to paint, I could just put that under 
and then I have to just clean that. If I want to clean it, or I don't really care if it stays full of paint because that's what it's for. <laughs> what you mean, Mosca? No vas a decir nada. Te vas a quedar callado con el secreto, ¿eh? No te vas, no vas a decir nada. Que vas a comer ice cream ahorita. Or you probably have one already in the freezer. What's your favorite? Everybody, what's your favorite ice cream? What's your favorite flavor? If you can have ice cream in front of you right now, what flavor would it be and what brand? Sazón said no ice cream for him. Oh my goodness. I'm going to try to heat dry this. Let's see if my mat under it will resist it. I don't really know if it will. But I'm going to try to heat dry this real quick. Just to give it a quick little heat blast. Just making sure that everything is covered. And that I don't have no craft color, anything showing underneath. I no special skill required, you guys. None at all. Let's go ahead and try this. Give it a quick little blast of the air. Keep it moving so you don't burn the plastic under. <laughs> right? Keep it moving really, really quick. Hopefully you don't burn the plastic. You don't have ice cream later? Oh no. Rum raisin, yeah. Me like you, rum raisin. We just had that the other day. I'm too, there was none no more. That was the other day. <laughs> Butter pecan, yum. Limbe, yum. Yes. So you guys see this is like a completely glossy finish. See the gloss? And that's the patent leather paint. No metallic, nothing. It just looks like patent leather. Just try to be even with your brush strokes if that's something that you're looking for because you will see every brush stroke in this paint if you're not even with your brush strokes, okay? But some texture is always good too, so I don't mind texture, out, you know, personally, but that's just me. So I've got my black. I've got some napkin here. Yay for napkin. I'm going to clean off some of that excessive black, but I'm going to continue to dry brush onto my, you know, surface. Basically what that means is I'm not going to clean it with water or add water to the paint to thin it down. That's your cat biscuit. <laughs> hey, you never know. You never know. Here I'm going to use also some uh, blue chalky paint and this is a matte finish. So Let's see if I even like how this looks. I'm only going to go for a little bit of this. But I do love this blue. So we're just going to go for a little bit. Let me grab my napkin just to see how I even like that. Because I might like it. I might not like it. Just trying to get that blue into, into that brush. And let's see. gonna add a little in spots. And I'm just and then I'm gonna grab this napkin and pick it up. Pick up most of it. It dried like instantly almost. That's what I want it to. I don't want it to be too overpowering. So I'm gonna grab a metallic color. You want to make it go? Anything on again? I might, maybe, maybe. Okay, now I'm going back on. Maybe, maybe not. You're cooking, sweating. I do. Dito. Sazon hot. Get my phone on. 
This one is dark patina. So I'm going to add some dark patina in there as well. This one is a metallic paint. And I'm just going to load my brush. And again, do the same thing because I don't want to lose all this blackness, right? I, I want this to stay predominantly um, dark. So I'm just going to add a little bit here, a little bit there. Hopefully you guys can see. And I'm just kind of splatting it on. I'm not really caring where it goes. Notice how I'm not adding nothing to my cat. And I'm just splatting that on like that. And then I'm going to grab my tissue and kind of pick up whatever wants to come off of there. Now let's go ahead and clean out that paint again. Still dry brushing, you guys. Still dry brushing. And I'm going to grab myself some gold paint, which I believe I pulled out. Did I knock it down? We're going to add some glorious gold to the mix because you can never have too much gold, you guys. And I'm going to add that to just a little bit. I'm going to load up my brush again. Make sure that it's loaded nicely. So that any color that's in the brush hiding kind of mixes in with that gold and I still get that gold color that I'm looking for. Right, so let's bring that out to the light. Hopefully you guys can see it again. Just basically doing the same thing and just tapping color into place. And I'm just tapping it into place. I don't care where it falls. We're just tapping it into place. Again, leaving most of my frame intact. I will go over most of my frame once again, just to make sure that um, I'm not losing what I'm trying to achieve. And let's see what this is going to look like in about a minute. I feel like I need a little bit more of this blue. So I kind of lost it just a little bit. Let's add a little more of this gold. I kind of like that. And then I'm going to go back over and just reinforce my frame. Make sure that my frame is clean. Yay, we're done with that. I'm gonna dry it, and then we're gonna see what it looks like on the frame. The flower next to the cat. Well, we'll look at it and see if it needs anything else. Once I put it on the background, hopefully you guys will be able to see what the colors actually look like, because I know with all this black behind the background, it's kind of hard. This will dry really quick, you guys. Simple way to add color to something and add texture without even knowing how to paint, you guys. Super, super simple. You could apply that technique to anything. So let's see what our canvas looks like. Sorry, you guys. I know it's so hard. Hopefully you guys can see it and appreciate it from, it from the side, how it looks. But before I do this, because I don't want to get no more paint on this, I'm going to put this to the side. But if you want to see it in white, I'm going to show you the back in the white, what it looks like. Can you guys see the blues and the golds and the greens in there? Can you see them? It's all sparkling. So 
So I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to start rubbing some color in here with my hands, you guys. So let me grab my other, no, I'm going to grab the same little dirty tissue that I got. And I'm going to start adding some of this brown right here that I have left over. I'm going to apply this with my finger, you guys. And I'm going to try to tap out as much of that excess as possible. And I'm going to just kind of go over with my finger. That way I use up all these different colors that I have going on in here. And I kind of bring everything together a little bit. Especially in areas where I have like white and stuff sticking out. Hopefully you guys are still all with me. Get some gold. Get some gold. Get some of this blue right here. Just kind of bring that into that part there. That's the line of the paper. So I'm going to try to blend that in a little bit. And I'm just going to pick up some color with my finger and just kind of add it in there so that I can kind of uh, remove where that paper starts and when the other one ends. Right, and I have splatters all over this. I did Mod Podge my surface. So technically speaking, I can literally wipe most of this off, but I don't know if I want to. I kind of like the little splashes in the background, to be honest with you guys. Um, so I'm gonna leave them in there. Right now, all I'm trying to do is cover up all these little bricks and um, all the areas that are like kind of white a little bit. I want that black to really kind of like stand out once I put it in there. So I'm going to try to frame this out. Okay. I'm gonna grab some green so that I can do some more highlighting on the top of what's actually here. Let's see if I find my metallic green. I hope I find it. Okay, I found one. Festive green. It's a little bright, but it's okay. Thank you, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Claudia. So I'm gonna get this color here. This is a green, it's called Festive Green, it's a metallic. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to my little mixture palette over here so that I can just kind of dip my finger in it. And I wanna thin that out. I don't wanna add a whole blob of paint on there because I'm gonna fill in the little holes that I'm actually not trying to fill in. So all I wanna do is kind of just rub it gently on some of these raised areas. Just so that the very tops and not the crevices catch the paint. I think I need a brighter color up here than this, just this green. So I'm gonna see. I need another color up here. You see how I can see that line? I don't like that. Good night, Sue. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Good night, Nada. Thank you so much for joining. Um, hmm. I'm looking for a color that I can use in there. It'll work well. Maybe some of this yellow inheritance. This is a matte color, actually. So I'm going to try a little drop. 
that's the color, it's called inheritance, it's a chalk paint. So I'm gonna try una gotica, a little tiny drop, like the tiniest little drop. It looks like burnt umber almost. I don't see that doing much, but. Doing much. Let's do it a little bit. Let's add a little bit more. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe I just have to add a little bit more. I'm trying to have like all these different textures kind of come in. But I don't want to fill in the grooves. All I want to do is just catch the top. Can you guys see that yellow? I'm trying to um, kind of blend in that straight edge that I can see by mixing in the metallic with that yellow color, just kind of dabbing it in there. So that hopefully, that doesn't really show too much. Let me add some more of that yellow. See, it's blending out a little bit more. Let me get that green. This one, not this one. And we're about to be done with this, you guys, believe it or not. So I'm gonna smash, basically this is what I'm doing. I'm grabbing the, both the colors and just kind of blending them in together on my finger. And um, just kind of smushing it in between where the line is, where I can see that line. And then just kind of blending it, like if you was applying makeup, just kind of blending it out. Just kind of pushing it in. So hopefully you don't see too much of that um, line where it starts and where it ends. Right? I think that's good, right? Making sure that it goes over. Where that space is, so that even though we know it's there, a person that doesn't know it's there hopefully won't see it right away, right? They're not gonna be like, hmm, that looks like an invisible wall over there. So let me go ahead and um, let me see how I'm gonna glue this baby. I think I'm just gonna add glue to it. And glue it that way. So let me see how I'm gonna Thank you, thank you. It looks like water, right? In the background, I could almost make it look like it's a lake if I wanted to, because it it kind of looks like water to me. Let's see if I'm gonna struggle like that. Some struggles with this group. <laughs> okay. It's like, like it's a good thing to notice itself when you forget to put the cap on, but then it's like it sucks because then you gotta uncap it. You gotta take all that gunk out. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get the gunk out of it. So I can actually use the glue. Here we go. And basically make sure you catch that frame all the way around. Now I'm gonna do one more step with you guys before I completely finish this canvas. That's gonna take it to a whole new level. 
because what time is it? It's only 8.37 and I'm about done. So I'm going to do one more thing with you guys. And then I'm going to have to let this thing dry because it's going to take like two days, three days to dry. After I do what I'm going to do next. So I got to make sure that this is like really, really well glued. As best as I can do it. I'm not really squeezing on the glue. I'm just allowing it to catch whatever's literally just hanging on, on the ends of the bottle. All right, let's go ahead and um, stick this down. Remember, I might patch this whole thing, so cleanup shouldn't be a, a difficult thing. Cleanup should be a breeze. I'm going to flip it over. Yeah, it does. That's what I was saying earlier, that it looks like he's, like there's a lake um, behind them. Because of the way that the the little ink kind of went into the um went into the the whole center of it all, this is why I don't mind you guys. I don't mind happy little accident accidents. Look how beautiful that looks. I absolutely love it right now the way it looks. But I'm gonna love it even more once I do what I'm gonna do to it. Okay, I'm gonna love it even more once I do what I'm gonna do to it. And honestly speaking, this is not even done. In my eyes, this is not nowhere near done, you guys, by far. Let me see if I find my medium. Give me a second. Let me see if I find my triple thick. That's what we're going to be using now. We're going to be applying some triple thick to the inside of that canvas. And we're also going to be inlaying some glitter to make it sparkle. Let me find my triple thick. Oh. So I'm going to be using some of this material right here. It's called triple thick. And basically, it's like a glaze. It's a really, really thick glaze that you can use on many different kinds of applications. For this one, what I'm going to be doing with this is that I'm going to be grabbing some glitter, some Glamour Dust Fine Glitter. I'm gonna be sprinkling it in to like some of the empty spaces, and then I'm gonna be adding some triple thick over it. That's gonna seal it and make it look encapsulated. And actually, what I'm gonna do real quick, since I have some of this ink in here, and I just really wanna continue this look of this lake, I'm gonna use some of this, like if it was a watercolor, even though it's really an acrylic um, stain, it's acrylic paints. Um, but I'm gonna use a kind of like a watercolor and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of go in here and add um, just a little bit of water. Let me clean my brush for this. Thank you, thank you guys. I'm so glad you guys like it. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn some of these little paints that I have left over here. We're gonna turn them into a little bit of watercolor. Um, I'm gonna grab my little tin here. I'm going to dip my brush in this liquid. Again, this is like a watercolor stain. Basically, it's what it is. I'm going to just apply a little bit in there because I don't want too much. I don't want it to be like overwhelmed. I just want to add like a little bit in here somewhere. So I'm just going to kind of like emphasize this. Right here. I'm going to rub it out with my fingers to create some kind of transparency. Add a little bit at a time, just a little bit here, a little bit there, just a little bit right here. Remember, I have that Mod Podge. Okay. 
Let me add some water to that so I can thin it out a little bit. And I'll just add a little bit of water to that right over where I've added some of that ink just to kind of blend it into my background a little bit, give it more of a watercolor effect. Make it look more like the water it's meant to look like. Just a little dab, just to darken it up in some areas. A little dab, you guys. I watched a lot of Bob Ross going up. <laughs> you might be able to notice in the way that I speak. I'm not trying to copy nobody, you guys. I was just that inspired by that man. Always have been, always will be. So when I start doing things like this, I automatically hear him. It's not funny how that happens. It's kind of like when I go to the beach and I try to get in the water and I hear Jaws. <laughs> Whenever I have a brush in my hand, I hear Bob Ross. It's not funny. So um, I've added here some of my water, which I think looks like water for the most part, right? So now what I'm going to do is I still have a little bit of brown metallic paint, just a little dab. I'm going to make a little bit of land by just adding a little bit of my wet brush and just picking up the slightest little amount of some of this metallic paint. And I'm just going to kind of add that in there. Just kind of add it in there to kind of go in with what's happening here. Right? Kind of just bring that in. Bring a little bit of that land in there. Kind of separates the horizon from the ground. Add a little bit of that dark um, brown in there. Just gonna add a little bit. Just need a little bit. We don't need it to be a lot. It doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to look like actual browns, you guys. A little bit of shadow goes a long way. And then I'm just gonna drag that out. So it looks like it's reflecting something. We don't know what it's reflecting really, but it looks like it's reflecting something. And lastly, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that black. That I still have some of that um. Some of that, uh, um, what you would call it, black, that the shiny black, right? That patent leather black. I'm gonna add a little bit of that. I'm just gonna take off some of the excess from my brush because again, I don't want it to be too dark. So I'm just gonna wipe that off just a little bit. I just want the tiniest little amount so that I can kind of just darken this horizon line just a little bit. Just add a little bit of that in there. Smush that up just a little bit more. Okay. Just a little bit. I just kind of swivel that across right there. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to kind of, you know, make that that her that horizon line a little bit stronger, you guys. That's all that was about. And that's basically it. I'm pretty much done with that as it is and as it stands. Um, the only thing that I'm going to do real quick, actually, while I still have some of this paint left over, I'm going to wet my brush again. And I'm just going to add a little bit more detail on the bricks because um, you might as well. You got all this paint. Might as well put it to use. So I'm just going to water this down. I'm going to remove a lot of this excess off of my brush because I don't need all of that excess. I'm not trying to make it completely black. I just want to add a little bit of um, just a little bit of lines here and there in between the grooves just to add a little bit of shadow in some of these areas just to make the the bricks kind of show a little bit more if the brush gets too stiff for what you're trying to do then just wet it up a little bit but it starts to give more contrast um, and it actually makes it look way more dimensional than what it really is. Just with a little bit of touches here and there, you will be surprised, you guys. If it gets too harsh, try to soften it up as fast as possible by rubbing your finger on it or something. And actually, I think I can actually scoop up some of this black on here because my brush is actually white enough. I'm going to pick that up. And I'm going to leave it flat. And I'm going to let some of that texture that's in that paste 
get picked up by some of this, you know, by the bricks, by this brush, by the bricks. I don't want to make it totally black, but I do appreciate um, the little bit that is picking up here and there because it's giving me texture without taking away. And hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do the same thing to the top as well, but hopefully you guys can see what it is that I'm doing. Let me do this. Basically, my brush is very dry. I'm not pushing it into the canvas. I'm just allowing the, the nooks and crannies from the tops to just kind of pick up some of this color, you guys, because I don't want to waste it. This is beautiful paint. We cannot waste beautiful paint, you guys. So we don't want to take all of this away. But we do want to pick up some of this black wherever possible. It'll just help give our things, our, our canvas a little bit more depth. Um, kind of bring everything together a little bit. If it gets too heavy, just rub it out. Trust and believe that what we left over will be amazing. Right? So we're going to keep adding that until you feel satisfied. I like my bottom a little darker, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more. And then I'm going to rub it out with my napkin. So I don't want it totally black. I just want it darker. So I'm going to flip this over. This is what you guys see all that black little texture on it. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to do the same thing to my leaves with the black, you guys. So I want everything to kind of go. So again, look how flat it is. It's like super, super flat. And you guys can see how flat that brush is. See how flat I made it? I'm using it kind of like if it was a spatula. So I'm not going to brush into it. Like I'm actually trying to give it a paint stroke. I'm just going to lightly hover over all the little edges. Lightly hover. And just try to um, go into whatever pattern it is. Just add a little bit. Just a little bit. If you feel like it starts to get too heavy, bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. Before it dries, right? That's just to give it a little bit of texture. Wipe it off, wipe it off. Okay. And I'm just about done with this paint, so it was actually enough for everything that I wanted to do. So very lightly, especially when you just load it and you have all of that fresh paint on there, you definitely want to be really light right then and there because um, you have the most amount of paint that you can literally discharge onto your canvas. And that's harder to get rid of um, than when you just do it really softly and just a little bit at a time. And you just play with it until you feel satisfied. And again, I'm gonna add the darkness right over my edge. And then I'm gonna wipe it off with my napkin. I'm gonna bring that over just a little bit onto this part of the canvas, just a little bit over the edge. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab my bra on my, and I'm just gonna kind of smush that over. You guys can see what I'm doing. Just kind of smushing it upward. Not too much pressure because I don't wanna damage all of my texture, but I do. Just with my finger, just kind of want to smush that and just pick up whatever I can from there. See what a difference? You can see more of the texture on the leaves. You can totally see more of the texture on the bricks. Like everything looks more together. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. So now that we've done this, this dries instantly, basically. Let me go ahead and clean my brush because I'm a stubborn learner. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Look how clean my water is. Hello, Lisa. How are you, darling? Long time no see. And then we're going to go ahead and start applying our triple thick. This is a sealer, you guys. So what I'm gonna do before I even do any of that is grab my glitter. And I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit here, a little bit there. 
in some of these areas that are open. And granted, this glitter is gonna go everywhere. Once I start really, um, you know, this glitter is gonna go absolutely all over this place. So now that we have that, now we're gonna use our triple thick and it's a really, really thick honey-like um, type of a paste. Let me close this be before I pour this all over my desk. I just saw that lid. Um, and I'm gonna try, let me see if I can clean my spatula real quick to use the spatula. Just scrape all this dry paste off of it. Because whatever gets introduced to that is gonna stay in there. So I'm trying to like um, get rid of all little flakes of paint or paste that can get introduced into my thing. So let me just clean this out. Okay. And this is what we're going to do. I'm doing magnificent. So this is what we're going to do now. I grab my triple thick. I'm going to... What the heck? Hold on, you guys. It's sealed over. I got to pop it. <laughs> you see? Let's pop it. It's pretty old. Let's see. I have a bottle too somewhere. Because I found it. This one might be too old. Yeah, dry. It's dry. So this is no good. I'm going to throw this out. Let me look for my other one because I do have another one. Give me a second. Ah, oh, you're Leo. You have so many bottles, right? So what's happening? You have so many bottles. I have stuff in fifteen hundred places. So give me a second, you guys, while I try to see if I can locate it. If I cannot locate it, then we're gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna have to share it when I do finish it. But I do know I have some somewhere. I just don't know where that somewhere is. Wait, my drawer. My drawer didn't want to close. Let's see. Is there any of these? No, it's not. Okay, you guys. I don't want to hold you guys up here forever. And I think my triple thick is not here in my room. I think it's somewhere else. Probably in the living room where I have another section full of all the stuff that I carry with me every time I will craft over there. And then I never bring it back. So I'm going to check one more place. If I don't find it there, then we're going to move on. And I found it. And I don't have much left. I got to buy more. I don't have much left, you guys. I got to buy more. All right, we have some. Hopefully, this one's not dried up. Uh, thank you, Lizzie. Okay, I found some. Oh, so basically, I'm going to pour this liquid all over the... I'm going to spread this out so that it kind of encapsulates this whole little design that I, you know, that's, that I did with the, with the machine. So I'm just going to spread it out.
And when this is dry, it looks really milky right now. It's almost like resin. Once this is dry, it'll look clear and you'll see everything is in the background. You just wanna make sure that you fill everything in. You fill the whole cavity up. I'm scraping it off the cat because the cat is not as important to me as the rest of the stuff. I don't mind him being covered. So I do want it to be encapsulated, but for me, the priority is everything else. So let's add a little bit more. And I love this product, you guys. You know what is love? Love uh, this product, you guys. And it doesn't matter to me what brand, although I haven't tried other ones. But if you can get your hands on Triple Thick, buy it. You can do so many things with this product. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how many things you can do with this product, you guys. You will be surprised. It's not just for mixed media and it's not just for artists. It's also for paper, for paper crafters, you guys. I've done embellishments using this product. I've done all kinds of things using this product. The only thing is you have to let it dry. And it's going to give it a permanent wet look. Which I also love, which is part of the reason why I love, love, love this product so much. That's one of the things I'm so grateful for the experience of working with Deco Art products because, to be honest with you, I got I, I, I was exposed because of the artist helping artist program. I was exposed to so many mediums and things that I never even heard of or knew what they were used for. This is one of those things, you guys. I'm spreading a very thin layer around the perimeter of the black um, circle. And at the same time, I'm kind of smoothing this all out, making sure that it's kind of leveled because um, it is a canvas and the surface is not really even, even though it appears to be um, kind of, you know, dips in and stuff like that in certain spots. But I absolutely, absolutely love this. Do this only when you know that you're, you're, you're done. Like if you're still not sure of what else you want to add in there, you don't want to do this because you will not be able to properly paint over this once you've sealed this in. So make sure that if you're painting on it or if it's a piece of paper that you've done your stamping or whatever you're going to do to it before you apply the triple thick, you guys, make sure that your surface is dry. If it's paint, make sure it is dry thoroughly before you apply this because this will pick up anything that's water soluble because it's a liquid at the end of the day. So like if you're working with like, let's say distressed inks and stuff like that, make sure that you seal that off so that it doesn't move. So that when you apply this, it doesn't tint up your clear and everything looks brown, like coffee. <laughs> so just a, a little tidbit for me to you. So I think this is pretty smooth. I might not have been able to cover every little nook and cranny, although I'm hoping that I do. So again, this is just gonna protect my surface, but at the same time, it's also kind of encapsulated and encapsulate all that glitter in that spot and in that area that I've added. I'm gonna add a little sprinkle of glitter on this on the outside now that it's basically all filled in, just so that I kind of have glitter in different layers. You know, I have the very bottom layer and then I'm gonna have a little bit towards the top. I still have some on my brush, so that's, I mean, on my spatula, so I'm just using that to kind of fill in wherever I feel like um, it's missing. Look for air bubbles. If you don't like air bubbles, you can always look for air bubbles. A good tip is also to give it a quick heat blast that will usually remove any air bubbles that you might have. They'll rise to the surface, okay? So I'm thinking that this is pretty good at this point in time. Let me go ahead and again, grab a little bit of this glitter, just a fine, fine, fine amount. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it around this base here. And mostly around the cap.
Finito. It's kind of spreading that out. I don't want it to be clumpy anywhere, so I'm just making sure that I'm breaking up any clumps of um, glitter. I'm just going to drag this spatula across it. All right, let's give this a quick heat blast, you guys, and then it's final pro it's final um share. So here we go. Thank you guys so much for being here with me and for the ride. This has been awesome, as usual. I can't dry the whole thing now, but I will give this a quick little blast just to bring any air bubbles to the surface in some of the areas that are really um thick with the gel. So this is just basically to make sure that any air bubbles do rise up. Kind of like what you would do with like resin or something else. Basically doing the same exact thing here. Just a little bit. This takes hours to dry, you guys. Don't brush it with the heat tool. Allow it to do its thing. Allow it to dry, you guys. Don't brush it with the heat tool, okay? A little bit over the top just to, you know, push the air out. But other than that, you're good to go. Yes. So <laughs> with that being said, you guys, I know that my, um, you know, me being able to share this with you guys fully, completely, 100% is a little difficult because of my camera situation. But hopefully you are able to capture most of what I did. If you follow me on my social media, i.e. either Facebook or Instagram, you will get to see it there. Okay. And I want to thank you all so, so much once again for your unconditional love and support. You know that that means the world to me. Thank you. Thank you so, so much to my dear friends, Isabel and Janet. And of course, to Hubby Sasson's Vintage World, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels. Don't forget to join us when we go live and to watch our videos. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up because we work hard just like you. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for being here. And we'll catch you on the next one. Love you. Bye.